Hello, and welcome to this kind of recap episode on this big laser cutter here. In this episode, I'll show you how um, this thing generally works, and we'll perform some test cuts on the laser machine so you can actually see that it works. So I think I'll just start with the general workings of this laser cutter or the panel here. So as you can see, we've got this just normal panel which can load all the laser jobs and you can, as you can see, can jog the machine and that works just fine. And then I've programmed an Arduino, which we'll see later on, which can lower and or raise and lower the table, you know, to accommodate different thicknesses of material. And we've got this switch here, which turns on the ventilation and the pressurized air. And that's basically it. Um, we've got some different safety measures on here. So you can, s I don't think whether you can, I don't know whether you can see it from here, but we've got a, um, emergency off, which when pressed, well, this thing just shuts off. And we've got an FI um, socket over there. I also implemented it that when um, the laser machine is opened, the uh, LED strips turn from, well, blue to red. There's a little micro switch here. And this is just to kind of give the impression of danger, which definitely is there because well, the laser is basically exposed to your face. So um, this turns red. And I don't think you can actually see this that well on camera, so I'll just switch off the lights. Yes, you can see the red definitely is there. And you can actually see it very, very well in real life. And as you can see, we've got the laser tube over here. And this laser tube is a 40 watt CO2 laser tu tube which uses about 25 kilovolts at 25 milliamps or 20 milliamps. Um, so that's, you know, 50 watts of electrical power that results into 40 watts of optical power. Um, then we've got a mirror over here, then a mirror on the uh, Y gantry and another mirror on the, um, well, the laser head itself, and then there's a lens in here which focuses the beam onto the material. And if, uh, of course, we've got the pressurized air here, which blows all the burnt junk out of the uh, cut. And the lasers are carefully lined so that the laser is always, um, well, it's always faced onto the lens, um, no matter where the machine is in the uh, XY plane. All the movements are performed by just normal NEMA 17 stepper motors and these linear rails here. And I chose linear rails because they're pretty sturdy, so you can, well, this thing can actually move pretty fast. Um, I've got some end switches uh, over here and over here, you can't see it in the shot, which enable the homing of the whole machine. And the home point is over here. Another feature is, which is very necessary, is um, the water cooling of this tube because the CO2 laser produces quite a lot of heat in the endpoints of the laser tube or where the um, arcs are made. We'll see this in action later on. Um, we need to actually water cool the whole system. And I've just solved this by using a bucket with an aquarium pump that's just pumping um, it's just pumping distilled water. And as you can see, I've got cable carriers over here and I'll just move the camera. I've got some cable carriers on here as well. And this just makes um, the whole cable mess uh, not problematic. Also, we've got these loading gates on all of the sides of the machine, as you can see here, which I first thought were not very useful, but um, when I actually um, finished the machine, I found them to be very, very useful because when there's stuff that falls down or you know there's something wrong with the electrics, you can just use the gate. Oh, sorry for the focus here. You can use the gate and access the electronics over here without uh, removing the whole table. So that brings us over to the electrics or the electronics. And let me just explain what's going on here. This is the main power supply for all of the electronics. 
just I think 24 volts for the stepper drivers and the Arduino and the Litro MPC6515 uh, mainboard. Then we've got the Arduino Nano which basically just um, controls this big stepper motor over here and this controls the table lift mechanism which is basically just four um, trapezoidal um, threads which raise and lower the table using this uh, belt system and this is connected to this uh, linear potentiometer and based on the value of the potentiometer we can raise and lower the table. Then we've got the main controller which controls the um, the XY movement and all the file managing and the laser firing and everything so this is basically the brain of the machine well in this analogy if you think this is the brain this is the muscle for the motors and this is the muscle for the laser cutter or for the laser tube itself so this is the power module which produces 25 kilovolts for the laser tube then we've got some wires and some tubes just for the process gases or the process media then under the machine, there's the um, pressurized air pump. We've got the water bucket, and we've got the homemade filtration system, which uses F4, no, G4, F9, H13, and carbon filtering. So this is a pretty efficient filter. Okay, so in this little scene, I'll just show you how I generally cut things with this laser cutter, or what the process is. As you can see, I just I got the file in here, I just called it laser. I don't know why, just uh, some name. And before I can actually um, start the laser job, I'll have to turn on all the ventilation and stuff. And I don't think that you can hear me when all this stuff is running, so I'll just explain this. Then I'll just um, select this, so like this, now it's selected. And then I'll just uh, press start. This should take just five seconds. All right, let's do this. All right, so I just uh, let this run a little bit so that all the smoke can um, just be filtered off. And then we can just uh, take this material out and see how well the cut performed. And I can't actually smell any smoke right now, so the whole ventilation system actually works pretty well. Alright, let's just take out all of the material. There it is. Uh, just as you can see, the loading gates. Oh, it's. I'm just kind of used to just using the loading gates and well it didn't cut perfectly through but uh, that's actually not a problem you can just pop that out and there's a little square and that square should be 20 by 20 millimeters let's measure that all right here it is as you can see that's pretty much spot on maybe maybe half of a tenth of a millimeter off but I don't know, maybe parallax. So that's pretty nice. All right, I think this should be it. Thank you very much for watching. And if you're interested in the details on how I built this, I've actually got a whole series on basically all the details of this whole machine. So if you're interested in that, just give that a watch. All right, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.